Heavy rain, strong winds, and maybe a tornado? 2023 is wasting no time bringing us our first severe weather chance of the new year, and we're here to tell you all about it. Anthony Taylor here with Upper Cumberland Weather. We're not even two days into the new year, and we're already talking severe weather. That's Tennessee for you. Uh, before we start getting into the meat and potatoes of this forecast, if you can do me a huge favor. If you're on Facebook, please leave some sort of reaction or comment on this post. Or better yet, if you could share it, that really helps us with the algorithm, getting this video out to y'all, our followers. There's over or nearly 37,000 of you on Facebook. Uh, if you're on YouTube, if you're not already subscribed, please hit that subscribe button, like this video. And in fact, if you're on Facebook, do us another favor, go over to YouTube and subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's where our 24-7 live channel lives, the Upper Cumberland Weather Channel. Uh, we have daily forecasts, live radar, and our Tower Cam Network can be found there, along with all of our great sponsors as well. Uh, so if you could please subscribe to our YouTube channel, it's greatly appreciated. Uh, but let's get uh, started talking about severe weather, though. So here's the setup. We have a strong weather system slowly working its way towards Middle Tennessee, uh, right now, all the storms are mostly situated across parts of eastern Oklahoma, Arkansas, northern Louisiana, back into far eastern Texas, and extending into western parts of Tennessee. All this activity is going to slowly work its way towards us, uh, mainly tomorrow and into tomorrow night. Don't think we're going to see too many issues tonight. And in fact, we'll take a look here in just a moment at the Storm Prediction Center's outlook for today. Uh, we have a broad, severe weather outlook extending from central Oklahoma into middle Tennessee, uh, stopping just short of I-65, so this does not include us. Uh, the bullseye of this severe storm outlook is for parts, uh, again, of Arkansas, northeastern Texas, northern Louisiana, all the way up to the Mississippi River there in far western Tennessee. That's where severe weather is expected again this evening into tonight. A complex of storms is expected to form from all of these storms we're seeing today, move northeastward into middle, well, western Tennessee, western Kentucky, as the nighttime hours progress, falling apart before they readjust. So I don't think we're going to have too many storm issues tonight or even in the morning. Might have a few scattered showers, maybe a rumble of thunder around. It's not going to be until tomorrow and into tomorrow night when our severe weather risk comes into play. This is the HER model, the HRR. Uh, this is a short-range model, the 20Z run. We're going to look at the period of uh, the remainder of this evening into the nighttime hours, and uh, we'll fast forward through this. You can see storms to our west developing, uh, mainly only impacting western parts of the state and into Kentucky, uh, not really of any concern to us. As we fast forward, this is at midnight tonight again, not seeing any activity in our area, maybe a scattered or isolated shower or two uh, as the overnight hours progress. This is at 6 a.m. tomorrow as some of you are getting ready for your morning commute. Again, mainly dry, maybe an isolated shower or two. Now, it's just one model. We're going to look at another model here in a little bit. Uh, but again, you see thunderstorms, though, ongoing across western Kentucky, northwestern Tennessee. Uh, but uh, this is the end of that particular model run. We'll have to go to the 18Z model uh, to go further ahead with this. But uh, you can see a Pretty strong complex of storms there across West Tennessee. Uh, but again, by 8 a.m., maybe a shower or two, maybe an isolated rumble of thunder, uh, but not expecting anything widespread here in the Upper Cumberland, at least through 8 a.m. tomorrow. So if you're worried about severe weather tonight, I don't think there's too many, too much to be concerned about, at least while we sleep tonight. So you can go to bed in peace. Uh, just be weather aware tomorrow, uh, which we're going to get into. Now, as the daytime hours progress tomorrow, we do expect that chance for strong to severe storms to increase uh, both by afternoon and again during the overnight hours tomorrow into early Wednesday morning. As you can see here, we have the Storm Prediction Center's Day 2 outlook, and uh, this has actually been increased for us from earlier. We were initially in the marginal risk area. Now we have been upgraded to the level two slight risk category for severe weather uh, and this includes the entire upper cumberland region uh, in fact i'll zoom in here you can see we can get in tighter here uh, so no matter no matter if you're south in mcminnville spencer uh, north into cookville jamestown back into lafayette carthage this includes all of the upper cumberland region our entire uh, coverage area is included in this slight risk for severe weather tomorrow uh, this is a 15% risk of severe weather occurring within 25 miles of any location. And we can get a little bit more granular with this. This is the damaging wind potential uh, for tomorrow into tomorrow night. There is a 15% risk of damaging winds occurring within 25 miles of any location. So if you're in Cookville, there's a 15% chance of damaging winds occurring within 25 miles of you. Same for Jamestown, same for Lafayette, same for Spencer, same for Carthage. Doesn't matter where you are, wherever you're located, somewhere within 
25 miles of you, there is a 15% chance of damaging winds occurring. There's also a risk of isolated tornadoes occurring tomorrow through tomorrow night as well. Uh, Storm Prediction Center has a 5% outlook uh, for an isolated tornado or two. That's a 5% chance of a tornado occurring, again, within that same 25-mile radius of any location. Uh, so that is one thing we're going to have to watch out for. Now, I don't think this is going to be a widespread type of tornado event. I think this would be more linear along with the QLCS we could see tomorrow night or with that line of storms we could see earlier in the day. Cannot rule out a spin-up tornado uh, in, in either event. Uh, but if we zoom this out, we can look down uh, across parts of uh, south, south central Alabama, southern Mississippi, and into eastern Louisiana. You can see there that is where uh, your greater tornado risk is going to be tomorrow, uh, where they'll have the potential for maybe some long-lived violent tornadoes uh, with discrete supercells possible. We're not expecting that kind of tornado threat here, but there is a tornado threat tomorrow, so do take it seriously, as we do every tornado potential not a um, huge tornado risk by any standard, but if a tornado were to occur and it hits your home, then of course it's a big deal to you. So we, of course, want to take this seriously. Now, this is not a severe weather product we're looking at here. This is the uh, Weather Prediction Center from NOAA. This is their excessive rainfall forecast. And uh, for most of us, there is a slight risk of excessive rainfall occurring uh, tomorrow through tomorrow night. Uh, the quantitative precipitation forecast issued by the Weather Prediction Center shows us getting away from an inch and a half to two inches of rainfall. Uh, that's from now through Wednesday morning. Uh, so we're not too, too worried about significant flooding issues, uh, but we can't, uh, we can't rule out some localized flooding concerns, especially in low-lying areas along creeks and streams uh, and other poor drainage spots, maybe along some roadways that are prone to flooding. And that's only if we get thunderstorms training over the same areas for an extended period, or if we get one storm that sits over an area for a while, and then later on we get another storm sitting over that same area for a while, then we can have some issues from runoff and that sort of thing. So we will have to watch for that. It's not a huge concern tomorrow, but it is something I want to point out as well, in addition to the severe weather concern. So now let's go back and look at models again. So we're back onto the HER model, the HRRR, but this is the 18Z run. Uh, every six hours the runs are a bit longer, so we can see forward in time uh, quite a bit longer than with the uh, hourly runs. Uh, but this is, uh, let's fast forward again to, uh, I think we stopped at 8 a.m., so let's fast forward to 9 a.m. And again, you can see that complex of storms arriving. Uh, this is at 11 a.m. tomorrow, and this is just one run of one model. Uh, the other model we're going to look at, the NAM, does not show this happening tomorrow. Uh, but the HRR is pretty keen on showing a, a line of storms, potentially strong, moving through around lunchtime tomorrow and then gradually tapering off in the afternoon. Maybe some more scattered activity uh, developing during the afternoon hours. And then we'll have maybe a bit of a lull before uh, the cold front moves through. And ahead of the cold front, we could see a squall line develop. Now, the HRRR is not all that keen on this happening. Uh, it thinks we may see, uh, in fact, let's zoom this out a bit. It thinks there will be more storm activity uh, across northern Alabama, northern Georgia, southeastern Tennessee. Uh, that would inhibit that transport of that rich, juicy, uh, moisture and those dynamics we need uh, for big time storm development during the nighttime hours. So if that were to happen, that would be kind of ideal, at least for the nighttime hours and limit our severe weather potential. Uh, but that's no reason to let our guard down over with this. This is just one model run uh, with one particular model. And I'm not in total agreement with this, uh, along with what the Weather Service is saying in their forecast discussions as well. Uh, but again, it is worth pointing out, but this would be at 2 a.m. if this model verified. And we'll fast forward through time, and again, you see those storms gradually tapering off by around mid-morning on Wednesday. Uh, but now let's take a look at the NAM model. So this is the NAM, and I'm starting this at around 6 a.m. tomorrow. And again, much the same story, maybe a few isolated and scattered showers around in that complex of rain and storms off to our west. But as we work towards lunchtime, as you can see, that complex of storms really does not materialize the same way as it does with HRRR. The reason for this is we're not expecting atmospheric instability to be quite in place yet. There will be some parameters there, uh, but all the ingredients won't quite be together just right for severe weather development. Doesn't mean we can't see a strong storm or two, uh, but this model is really keying in on there not being a whole lot of storm activity around during lunchtime. Now, by late afternoon, by 5 p.m., it does show some scattered showers and storms around. Can't rule out some severe activity with that. Uh, this is in alignment with HRRR as far as storms around that time frame. Again, that 5 p.m. time frame. Uh, so, again, we could see some scattered activity around then. But then watch what happens as we move towards 9, 10 o'clock. 
Uh, in fact, this is 11 o'clock. You see that line of storms developing there west of I-65, uh, extending from Robertson County down into uh, West Tennessee, just east of Jackson. And uh, this is ahead of the cold front. And as you can see, by 1 a.m., we have a pretty stout line there. That would be a QLCS squall line uh, with the potential of uh, producing damaging wind gusts and maybe an isolated tornado or two. And that line moves through, again, during the early morning hours between 2 and 4, maybe 5 a.m. Uh, Wednesday. And again, this is just one run of one model, so timing details are still left to be ironed out. Uh, but that is something we may have to contend with if this model verifies. Now, uh, again, this model doesn't think we're going to see as much shower and storm activity to our south, which would allow that rich transport of all that juicy storminess, stores those ingredients we need to produce storms. Uh, that would allow those ingredients to reach us potentially as that cold front's moving through, uh, allowing for those storms to form and potentially become strong to severe. So bottom line is this. We have two rounds of severe weather possible tomorrow. This includes the possibility of a nighttime event tomorrow, which we I do have some concern with because some of the ingredients for severe weather may be in place. And again, we have that level two risk for severe weather. Uh, this is in all modes of severe weather possible, except for hail. We're not too worried about hail, but damaging winds certainly, and maybe even, even that threat of an isolated tornado or two with this occurring at night. Of course, there is some concern, uh, but now's the time to make sure you are prepared in the event we do see severe weather. Uh, everyone should have a NOAA weather radio there. Just as important to have as smoke detectors in your home, especially in this part of the country with as much severe weather as we see throughout the year. Uh, make sure yours is programmed and set to go off of your location uh, with batteries installed in the event of a power failure. Uh, but you want to make sure it will go off in case a warning is issued. If you don't have one and you can afford it, they're only around $30. You can pick them up at Walmart. Last time I was at Walmart, they were well stocked. They're, they've been pretty good lately about keeping them in stock at Walmart. So you could run and get one today, program it. They're very easy to program. Plenty of YouTube tutorial videos out there. Uh, just make sure your station is working and you're tuned uh, to a station that will go off for warnings for your area. Uh, secondary to your weather radio should be a weather alerts app. Uh, there's several paid and free options out there. If you want a good paid one, I recommend Stormwatch Plus. I believe Storm Shield is free, but both of them are good apps you can use. Uh, just make sure your phone stays fully charged tomorrow. Uh, make sure your ringer is turned on. Make sure Do Not Disturb is turned off because you want to make sure those alerts get through your phone. And make sure notifications are enabled for that weather alerts app because if you don't have notifications enabled, that weather alerts app is going to do you no good. Uh, and most phones should also have wireless emergency alerts from the federal government. Uh, there should be an option to toggle that on or off in your settings. It should hopefully be on, uh, but if it's not, go into your settings, make sure that is enabled. So if a tornado warning is issued, that could be your third backup plan, uh, getting that alert through the WEA uh, system. So uh, three ways there you can get an alert before you even need to rely on a siren, because not everyone in this area has a siren. Some of the make bigger towns do, and some areas don't. And definitely out in the rural areas, we don't have them. So again, you can't rely on a siren totally, especially if you're indoors. So you want to make sure you have multiple ways of receiving alerts should a warning be issued. Now with this potentially being a nighttime event for severe weather, now we may have daytime severe weather too, but with the threat of nighttime severe weather, I definitely want to make sure I go over tornado sheltering guidelines in the event a tornado warning is issued. Hopefully we make it through all of tomorrow and tomorrow night without a tornado warning. But if one were to be issued, I want to make sure you're prepared. Now, this is a QLCS event likely tomorrow night, a squall line. So if a tornado were to form, it will quickly form, may not even have much warning. It, that rotation may pop up on radar before we can even get a warning out, and that tornado may already be on the ground. That's usually the case with QLCS events, so keep that in mind. Uh, but if a tornado warning is issued, you want to make sure you're ready to go to your safe place. Uh, so you want to avoid mobile homes, vehicles. Uh, highway overpasses are not safe. Uh, large open rooms like gymnasiums, manufactured housing. Now, I'm not talking about permanent foundation. I'm not talking about modular homes. My wife and I are even considering a modular home with a permanent foundation. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to those who live in a manufactured single-wide trailer, maybe a double-wide that's not on a permanent foundation. Those are not are very safe at all during severe weather. You do not want to seek shelter in one of those during a tornado warning or even a straight line wind event. Straight line winds, strong enough, if they are strong enough, could take out a trailer. So you don't want to be there in the event of a tornado warning. But again, with these warnings, they may not give you may not have much lead time with them with this being a squall line. 
Uh, so you want to make preparations ahead of time before you find yourself in that situation. And we'll get to that here in a second. Uh, but good options for what you want is to be in a well-constructed home. Uh, I'll even say that can include a modular home if it has a permanent foundation. Again, my wife and I are looking into getting one. Nothing wrong with a type of housing, especially right now in this market. Uh, that's a whole other issue. Uh, interior room of a well-constructed home or building or in a basement. Uh, make sure you put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. You don't want to be in the same wall as a window. You don't want to be on an outside wall. An interior closet or bathroom. Make sure you have a helmet. Everybody should have a helmet, a bicycle helmet, uh, ATV helmet, a uh, motorcycle helmet, whatever, baseball helmet, whatever helmet you have available. Everybody should have one on. Make sure you have hard sole shoes on. Uh, God forbid a tornado hits your home. You want to be able to make sure your feet are protected getting out of there. And make sure you have plenty of blankets available to shield yourself from flying debris. And again, this is worst case scenario type stuff. Hopefully, none of this will apply to us tomorrow night or tomorrow. Just want to be prepared. Uh, your best options, though, which I know not a lot of people have this, but a tornado shelter is obviously your best bet. Uh, maybe a cell or something like that. Underground as much as possible. Totally protected from the wind. Uh, or a, spe a spe specifically designed FEMA safe room. Uh, but again, not a whole lot of those. I hope maybe we can get community storm shelters, uh, let those become more of a thing across the Upper Cumberland. That would be awesome to see. Uh, but again, those are some sheltering guidelines there. Uh, speaking specifically to those in mobile or manufactured homes, and again, I'm not talking to those with a permanent foundation. I'm talking to those who live maybe in a single wide, who live in a double wide, but it does not have a permanent fixed foundation, like a concrete block foundation. I'm talking to those who do not have that. Uh, you need to be aware ahead of time. So uh, on the day of severe weather, a day before, uh, with tornadoes in the forecast, you want to go ahead and be talking with family and friends about, hey, can I ride out the storms at your place? Uh, my place isn't the safest in the event we have a tornado. Uh, so you want to identify a place to go. Maybe it's a community place, a church, somewhere like that. Um, and then the day of, of course, uh, if a warning is issued, especially with tomorrow night situation, you're not going to have time to drive to your neighbor's house if a warning is issued. It's going to be too late. Uh, so you want to make sure you have those preparations done ahead of time in the event a warning is issued. That's all I have for now. Uh, we'll have updates posted throughout the day tomorrow. Uh, just keep in mind, severe weather is not that uncommon. Even this time of year, we have severe weather pretty frequently in the winter months. It's, it's a year-round thing here in Middle Tennessee. Heck, I think our last tornado warning was issued back in August, which is not a time of year you would expect to have severe weather, but yet it, that's the last tornado warning we had. Uh, didn't drop a tornado, fortunately. Uh, but we've done this plenty of times before. Uh, I know many of you may have storm anxiety. Just take the time to relax, to breathe. It will all be okay. We will get through this. Being prepared is key. If you are prepared, uh, that increases your chances tremendously of being able to make it through a severe storm unscathed. So be prepared, not scared, as they say. Uh, that's your best bet, and uh, you'll be in a great position to come away from any storm with your life intact. And that's exactly what we want. Stay tuned to Upper Cumberland Weather. Stay tuned to our Upper Cumberland Weather channel over on YouTube tomorrow. You can keep it running on your smart TV in the background. I encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you're not already, that's where the channel lives. We're working on getting uh, smart TV apps like Roku, maybe Amazon Fire. Uh, so uh, look for that. Uh, those announcements coming in the near future. I'm going ahead and letting that be known now because I'm working behind the scenes on making that happen. Uh, working on making more changes to the channel, adding more content. Uh, eventually, you'll see me on the channel every day, so that's exciting, I guess. Uh, uh, but again, uh, follow us there. Uh, make sure you share our posts tomorrow on Facebook with your friends and family. Leave reactions and comments. Again, it really helps with the algorithm, uh, getting that uh, content out there. Uh, and, and again, if we have any severe thunderstorm warnings or tornado warnings, we will go live with coverage tomorrow and tomorrow night as needed for any warning issues. So uh, stay tuned. Hopefully, we don't have to go live, but if we do, I will be here as always, again, we've talked about weather radios, your weather alerts app. Make sure those are set to go off. Uh, we're also looking, for, always looking for support. So if you want to help uh, support us through Patreon or our Facebook subscriptions, uh, I tremendously appreciate that. I'm huge, greatly appreciative of those we already have. And we could always use more because it allows us to invest in all the technology you see here. And with our new studio coming up with my wife and I, again, taking that step to build a home. Uh, again, we'll have a new studio coming with that. And uh, just bigger and better things down the line. If you're a business owner, a local business owner, you want to help sponsor us, uh, we do have advertising available on our local channel. So please reach out to us. I think it's some of the best, it's the best deal I think you can get in advertising uh, in the Upper Cumberland for what you get. I mean, you get a TV ad and 
all that good stuff. So uh, it's a pretty cool deal. So please reach out to us if you're interested in supporting us there. But that's all I have for right now. We'll be back tomorrow uh, or even tonight with further updates as needed. Y'all stay safe and God bless.